There's a certain level of fascination that comes with every archaeological discovery. But the very best discoveries should give you a sense of wonder. We hope to bring that sense of wonder to you in this video. It's packed full of incredible archaeological finds from all over the world, offering us new insights into people and places that existed long before any of us were born. When Europeans arrived in the Americas centuries ago, they brought more than just themselves, their weapons, and their greed for new land to colonize. They also brought their religion, and they pushed it upon the natives hard. In July 2016, archaeologists discovered 16th century Christian symbols deep inside a cave on the remote Caribbean island of Mona. They think the markings are connected to the work of early European evangelists. The cave is large, stretching over half a mile from the entrance to the deepest point. And it also contains over 250 indigenous markings, including finger paintings. Further along, though, there are crosses and Christian phrases written in both Spanish and Latin. There are 30 such markings often appearing in close proximity to the native paintings. The phrases are short and simple, including such observations as, God made many things, and may God forgive you. Rather than being made by the evangelists themselves, the archaeologists think that they're examples of native people writing things they've been taught. The cave therefore becomes a record of the very beginning of Christianity in this part of the world. The markings on the stones of Clava Cairns in Inverness, Scotland probably tell a story. It's just a shame that we have no idea what the story is. The cairns are formed from two ancient burial sites that overlap each other, but weren't built at the same time. The older of the two is about 4,000 years old, whereas its companion is closer to 3,000. The old and new sites meet in the middle, where we find three huge circular burial chambers and their entrance passages marked with standing stones. It's on these stones that the markings appear. They're a complicated set of ring and cup marks arranged in such a way that experts think they're likely to be an attempt at communication. Unfortunately, it's so far proved to be impossible to interpret or translate them. We're not even sure who's trying to communicate with us. It's possible that Clava Cairns is a Pictish site, but we know so little about the Picts that it would be irresponsible to state such a thing as a fact. We're leaving Scotland and going all the way to China now, where we find the West Shia Imperial Tombs in Yinchuan. Archaeologists weren't allowed to commence excavation work at the site of the tombs until 1972. But it's such an enormous job that the project is still ongoing today. However, the modern archaeologists working at the site are increasingly convinced that the beehive-shaped tombs are the last remaining trace of a lost kingdom. The uniquely shaped tombs are dotted all over the valleys in this area. There are almost 300 of them in total but all but nine are relatively small and insignificant. The remaining nine, on the other hand, are colossal mausoleums thought to have been built for the elite imperial rulers of the Western Xi dynasty. The dynasty controlled this part of China from the early 11th century until 1227, when they were overrun and conquered by Genghis Khan's Mongols. Khan's armies tended to follow a scorched earth policy so it's a small miracle that the tombs were left behind for us to study at all. There's enormous controversy about our next discovery, which is an ancient tomb that was found in Antalya, Turkey in 2017. At first, the stunning rock tomb was identified as a 2400-year-old relic of the Lycian era. That alone would make it a valuable discovery. But a more shocking theory has appeared since then. A scientist claims to have carbon dated some of the artifacts within the tomb and claims that it's closer to 12,000 years old. The question of age isn't the only controversy here. The cartouche of Egyptian Queen Nefertiti has been found all over the tomb's interior surfaces. Did Nefertiti ever visit this part of the world? If not, why is she named on the walls of this tomb? Even the structure of the tomb is a puzzle. The lower part takes the shape of a ship's bow, whereas the upper half looks more like a house. The entire structure is carved directly into bedrock, 
which must have been a painstaking process. It's almost as if the entire site is a practical joke designed to perplex and frustrate archaeologists. Modern China is a powerhouse of global production. That's why the label Made in China appears in so many places, from the clothes you wear to the objects you have in your home. It even appears on some of the contents of this 800-year-old shipwreck, which was rediscovered off the coast of Indonesia in 2018. The familiar slogan, written in its native language, has helped archaeologists uncover the history of the wreck, which is at the bottom of the Java Sea. They believe that the wooden hull of the vessel rotted away centuries ago, leaving only the ceramics and luxury goods that it once carried strewn across the seabed. It's the wording of the label that's helped experts to date the ceramics. It refers to the Chinese government district of Jianingfu. The area's name was changed to Jianinglu after the invasion of the Mongols in 1278, meaning the ceramics can have been made later than that year. Other goods lost in the wreck include elephant tusks and containers full of sweet-smelling resin. This would have been an extremely expensive loss for somebody when it happened. It's reasonably common for modern-day marriages to be accompanied by a prenuptial agreement, thus agreeing on the terms of any later divorce and avoiding expensive and stressful legal wrangling further down the line. Some people think that prenups take all the romance out of marriage, but they're not a new idea. In fact, here's one from 4,000 years ago, and it contains some very specific get-out clauses. The contract takes the form of a clay Assyrian tablet and concerns the marriage of a man named Lacopum and his bride-to-be, Hatala. What surprised historians the most about it is that it contains an agreement that the couple will have a surrogate child if they're unable to conceive naturally within two years. That might sound civilized, but the wording goes on to state that the child would be conceived with a slave purchased at Hatala's expense. In the event that the marriage was to end in divorce, the party initiating the divorce agreed to pay the other five minas of silver, with a mina being an ancient unit of weight. The fact that the balance of payment was so equitable suggests that gender relations may have been better back then than they became in subsequent centuries. The Zoroastrian Towers of Silence sound like the sort of place you might come across in a science fiction or fantasy movie. But they're a real place in Yazd, Iran, and a place with a somewhat ghoulish history. This is where the ancient inhabitants of Iran placed their dead for decontamination before moving them to their tombs. By decontamination, we mean they literally left them up here until all the flesh had rotted away. The tradition goes back at least 3,000 years and dictates that bodies should be arranged in concentric circles with men on the outside, women in the middle, and the remains of children at the center. By leaving the remains up here until the bones were bleached, the Zoroastrians believed that they were preventing contamination by demons. The demons apparently couldn't reach the top of the towers. Amazingly, the towers were still in use as recently as the 1970s, after which it became illegal to dump bodies on them. Some Zoroastrians still follow the old principles, though, so it's not uncommon to see bodies on hilltops in rural areas. Every piece of guitar music you've ever heard in your life might owe its existence to this artifact, which was found inside the High Pasture Cave on the Isle of Skye, Scotland, in 2012. It's a piece of carved wood that contains carved notches for strings. This identifies it as the bridge of a lyre and the oldest lyre ever found in Europe. Archaeologists believe it to be somewhere between 2400 and 2500 years old. The lyre is the first known stringed instrument and should therefore be considered the ancient ancestor of the guitar. Several small fragments of antlers and bones were found close to the lyre fragment and may have been used as tuning pegs. Wooden artifacts such as this one usually rot away before archaeologists can find them. But conditions deep inside the Scottish cave did an excellent job of preserving it. As impressed as experts are with its age, they still think it's likely that lyres were made long before this, perhaps even centuries earlier. If only we knew the songs that were once played on this one. 
In times gone by, humans have tried to make clothes out of almost every material imaginable. Reeds were once the default choice in some parts of the world, as is evidenced by the January 2010 discovery of this fragment of a reed skirt. It was found during a planned archaeological expedition into the cave known as Arini 1 in Armenia. The skirt might not be the most sophisticated or stylish item in the world, but we should make allowances for its age. The archaeologists responsible for the find say that it's 5,900 years old. When you take that into account, its state of preservation is remarkable. It's even retained traces of its original colors. This scrap of fabric holds the distinction of being both the only garment of its kind discovered in Armenia and the oldest reed clothing in the world. The world's oldest shoe was also found in the cave a few months before the skirt fragment, but archaeologists have not yet been able to prove that the two discoveries are related. About 13,700 years ago, a tribe of Magdalenian hunter-gatherers took shelter in a Spanish cave. While they were there, they etched some markings into the cave wall. After studying the markings since 2009, archaeologists now believe that these markings represent the oldest map in Western Europe. A team of experts from the University of Zaragoza have interpreted the etchings as depictions of peaks, rivers, scrublands, and ponds. There also appear to be a few representations of animals included, perhaps as examples of what could be hunted in each area. It might be a plan for a coming hunt or even the story of a hunt that happened in the past, but including a visual guide to the area the hunt happened in would still make it a map. The alleged map is inside the legendary cave of Abans Lamizulo, which is already notorious because it's said by local folklore to be the home of bird-footed nymphs. Legends aside, it was probably a strategically important place for ancient hunters because of the excellent view it provided of the canyons below. Travel a mile or two north of the charmingly named town of Chipping Norton in England, and you'll find the Rollright Stones. This is actually three separate collections of limestone monuments, and they've been standing upright since the Neolithic era. Local folklore and legend contain many stories about them, but the most popular is that the stones are actually the petrified remains of an ancient king and his knights who were turned to stone by a powerful witch. There are 77 stones in total included in the group known as the King's Men, arranged in a circular shape of around 100 feet in diameter. They're joined by the Whispering Knights and a solitary standing stone said to be the king himself. The truth behind the legend has been lost to time. The stones didn't end up this way by accident, but we don't know who arranged them in these formations or when. It's possible that they may once have been tombs or dolmens, although there are no human remains here now. The first mention of the witch legend is recorded in 15th century poetry, but the story is probably older. To add to the sense of mystery around the stones, it's said that it's impossible to count them accurately and that they move by themselves at night. Since we're in England, we should also check out the Shell Grotto of Margate. This might not be as ancient a creation as some of the places and artifacts we've looked at in this video, but it's just as mysterious. The official version of the grotto's history is that it was discovered by accident when a farmer dug a little deeper into his land than he intended to in 1835. After smashing the grotto's roof, he jumped down through the hole and found himself standing inside a massive structure covering over 2,000 square feet, every inch of which is covered in shell mosaics. It's impossible to count how many shells there are inside the grotto, but it's at least 4 million. The shells have been tested and proven to come from the local area, but the style of the design takes elements from ancient Greece and the Middle East. Unfortunately, it hasn't been possible to perform carbon dating tests on the shells. The farmer offered guided tours of the grotto to the public long before he let archaeologists in. So by that time, everything had been contaminated by the gas lamps he installed on the walls so people could see in the dark. Building something this large underground must have been a lifetime's work for someone, but who? And perhaps more importantly, why? 
We've rolled out the red carpet for you at Cinemisteria, where you'll be gripped by the highs and lows of Hollywood legends. We dig deep into movie mysteries, unveiling the secret subtext in epic films and the failures that make franchises flop. It's a terrific tour of silver screen success and cinematic catastrophes. Subscribe to Cinemisteria, where Hollywood's hidden stories come to light. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.